Welcome back to Breathtaking and our final celebration of disability rights. Today features an essay I wrote entitled Wheels on Wheels. When morning comes to Morgantown, the merchants roll their awnings down and milk trucks make their morning rounds in morning Morgantown. We'll rise up early with the sun and ride the bus while everyone is yawning and the day is young in morning Morgantown. The year was 1970 and Joni Mitchell's gentle song was among my favorites. Back then, her lyric evoked images of an idyllic town and its people, nothing more. But by 1980, that song had become my personal anthem a metaphor for the dignity and equality that had eluded me and millions of others who comprise America's largest minority, people with disabilities. Our circumstances varied. Some, like me, were polio survivors. Others had neurological, developmental, or sensory impairments. All of us readily identified with the words emblazoned on a disability rights bumper sticker, quote, accessibility, to boldly go where everyone else has gone before, unquote. In 1980, I certainly wasn't riding the bus with everyone. Sure, I rose up early with the sun, and my tax dollars subsidized the New York City Transit Authority but it was literally against the law for a bus driver to let me and my wheelchair board his vehicle. I was pushing 30, but my only bus experiences had been on segregated yellow ones, courtesy of the Board of Education. But soon after the Transit Authority added a smattering of lift-equipped buses to its fleet in 1981, I had my maiden voyage down Broadway on the M104 route. My own euphoria quadrupled when fellow commuters burst into applause as I ascended, Esther Williams-like, into their rarefied heights. But the honeymoon was soon over. I'd rise up early with the sun and ride the bus while everyone, it seemed, was gawking, grumbling, and even growling. Hey, this is taking too long. They should have their own special buses. And those were just the commuters. Some bus drivers exhibited signs of resistance, claiming that they forgot their bus lift key at home, and even defiance, slamming the door in my face and speeding away. Sometimes these affronts reduced me to tears, but having finally tasted freedom... I wasn't going to let it slip away. Once, a driver claimed I had no right to board his bus because I had arrived at the depot several seconds after he had done so. Just as he closed his door and inched away from the sidewalk, three pedestrians came running breathlessly toward the bus. They knocked on the bus door, and as is quite common in New York City, the driver opened it, slipping past me the trio boarded. A revolutionary I'm not. I never attended a sit-in in my life, but something surged inside me. My wheelchair and I jumped off the sidewalk and parked nose to nose and wheel to wheel with the bus. The irate driver ran into the street. Hey, lady, what do you think you're doing? With a tremulous voice, I replied, I'm not moving until you get me on board. Look, miss, I don't have all day, the driver sputtered. Motorists behind the bus, unaware of the drama unfolding, began to honk their horns. I was ready to relent. Then a miracle happened. Hey, let her on the bus. Yeah, we can wait. The voices belonged to the bus driver's own passengers. He grumbled, but he got me on board. In 1990, the Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law. On March 8, 
1995, the New York City Transit Authority retired the last of its inaccessible buses. The time had come to ride the bus, that American metaphor for freedom, with everyone. And ride I do. Getting to and from business meetings, theater outings, family reunions, lunch dates, shopping sprees, and even medical appointments is now a thrill. An even greater thrill is the knowledge that my long-awaited freedom now belongs to millions of my disabled comrades throughout America. But there's more. Today, I know that riding the bus isn't just about getting from one place to another. It's about the journey in between, the eye contacts made, the smiles exchanged, the questions answered. In short, the lives altered. Today, I rise up early with the sun and, more often than not, ride the bus while everyone is yawning. They're not gawking. They're not grumbling. They're not growling. Neither are the drivers. My wheelchair and I have become so commonplace that my fellow passengers are actually yawning or too immersed in their newspaper, coffee, or smartphone to notice my arrival. Best of all, I meet other wheels on wheels. Last year, I pulled into a Broadway bus stop and found a diminutive boy with big brown eyes and the spiffiest purple wheelchair I ever saw. Hi, I said to him and his 20-something mom. You guys waiting for the 104? Yep, the boy replied nonchalantly. When the bus arrived, I said, hey, you go first. I watched this beautiful boy position himself on the lift, apply his brakes, and rise. His tiny hands confidently outstretched to grasp the side railings. He resembled a prince surveying his domain. He owned the world, as every child should. Mark my words, some day someone will board the bus via the front door, and someone else, perhaps this young prince, will board via the back door's wheelchair lift, and maybe they'll meet in the middle. Maybe they'll become friends. Maybe they'll fall in love. Riding the bus is just the beginning. Anything is possible when the day is young. Please join me next week for more of Breathtaking.